Hi, I'm Laura Manick, Master Sommelier for the Weekly Tasting, and this week I'm sending you four delicious red wines from all over the world. So first we have a Syrah, and the Syrah is from France, and then a Malbec from Argentina, a Ribera del Duero from Spain, and finally a delicious Alianico from California. But it's not about the grapes or the regions this week, it's all about the oak barrels. So what does that mean? In this week's pack, I want you to discover the idea of oak barrels. So a barrel is made when you cut down a tree, primarily of the species of oak, and then you heat or toast that barrel in order to shape it into something that can hold wine. And depending on the amount of time the wine spends in the oak barrel and or the amount of toast or the percentage of new oak you use in your wine will determine how much flavor you get from that barrel. I like to think of oak barrels as like a big spice rack. A lot of times when you put a wine into a barrel, it'll seep deep into the pores and it'll extract some of the flavor that you, that you got from the barrel when you heated the barrel. So cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, clove, those are all flavors that you might get when a wine is aged in an oak barrel. But also, oak adds texture, oak rounds out certain tannins, and oak also can have its own tannins. So depending on the amount of oak you use and how delicate or how rich your wine is, is gonna determine just the end result. So I hope you enjoy these wines. As we discover and look at the different styles of wine that we have in this week's pack and also the amount of oak spent, I thought it would be interesting to try a red wine that does not spend any time in oak. This wine is Lunar Apogee. Lunar Apogee is 100% Syrah, and it is grown in the Rhone Valley of France. This wine is um, really typical in that style of Cote de Rhone, if you've ever heard of Cote de Rhone, but this one takes the appellation or the name Pays d'Oc. So it's just sort of a larger appellation instead of using the name Cote de Rhone. And 100% Syrah in this case gives us that really typical Syrah-like nose. The nose is more red fruit, um, cranberry, strawberry, and raspberries but it's really all about the pepper, the olive, and the savory qualities, like that charcuterie or smoked meat aroma. Lunar Apuchi is, is a delicious wine, and what's interesting is that this wine spends absolutely no time in oak barrels. So right after it's finished fermenting, they age it for um, a couple of months in concrete tanks. And the concrete tanks allow a little bit of oxygen to get in and out, but those are neutral vessels. So really, the wine is allowed to just be exactly as the winemaker left it uh, when the wine was finished fermenting. Just a little bit of that fresh fruit and that um, kind of soft tannin. It's about medium bodied and um, really juicy and fresh. Um, it doesn't have any of those vanilla or, or clove or um, you know, cinnamon-like aromas that you'll get in oak. So this is a really good baseline if you're not familiar with what red wine tastes like when it spends absolutely no time in barrels. Next up in our pack is the Deloriano Gomez uh, Malbec from Argentina. And this Malbec is from a region called the Valle de Uca. And Valle de Uco is a subregion of Mendoza and the most you know, celebrated region for Malbec in, Ar in Argentina. Uh, what I really love about this wine is this winemaker, Loriano, he so knows Malbec. He was working for some of the larger wineries in Argentina before venturing off on his own and starting basically what's like a garage style of um, winery. It's like essentially his garage. There's only 1,700 cases made and a really small production. His family still is like picking the grapes and, and helping him to make the wine. Um, so I put this wine in the pack because it's a uh, Malbec that's aged for six months. And the reason I thought that was important is we're going from zero months to now six months. So in the wine, you're gonna start to see some of those um, sweet spices that you might associate with a toasted oak barrel. And the wine kind of seeps a little bit into the, that barrel and gets some of those flavors. So Malbec is known for being like dark purple, almost like blue fruit, you know, blueberries, um, blue plums. It also has like a grapey aroma. 
And what I really am obsessed with in this wine is the intense violet aroma. This literally smells like dried flowers, and I love that. And it's very typical for Malbec. So if you had too much time in oak, if the wine was, you know, let's say 24 months in new French oak, you would really lose some of those delicate floral aromas that I think are so important to this wine. So this really oak is a supporting, you know, kind of role and not meant to overwhelm the wine. Malbec is known to be fuller bodied and this one is definitely rich and it's great for cold weather that we're having in the Northeast these days, but it doesn't have a lot of tannin. So the tannins are soft and they're really well integrated. So the wine just like silky slides off your palate, but doesn't make you feel short changed if you really like a full bodied glass of wine. So as we go through the pack, we're just like getting more and more oak influence in our wines. So our next wine is called Ardal. So in this case, Ribera del Duero is one of the most celebrated regions of Spain. It's located in the north central kind of area of Spain called Castilla Leon. And in this uh, particular wine, it's 80% local grape called Tempranillo and 20% of a grape we all know and love, Cabernet Sauvignon. What I really uh, thought was interesting about this wine is there's two types of oak that they use to um, age the wine. One is uh, French oak, and the other type of oak that they use and mix in is American oak. So what that really means is that the oak comes from forests in America or far forests in France. And when you toast these oaks and you use maybe one uh, barrel of French oak and one barrel of American oak, you can really play with that spice rack. So in the case of American oak, instead of the sweet spices like vanilla and clove, we tend to get more of the savory aromas and spices. I think about and dill and coconut whenever I smell a uh, wine that has been aged in American oak. And I, put, and I really love the way Tempranillo tastes in that it's red cherry and it has this savory aroma like dill and it, it just really shows the grapes so well. So in this case, when you smell the wine, you really smell the oak. It's kind of like a very smoky, charred, vanilla, like vanilla bean. And almost when I said that dill thing, it's like totally dill and coconut, which is a weird combination, but it's very much American oak. It even has like a sawdust aroma, almost like um, like Home Depot wood. So, the red fruit is all about Tempranillo. Red plums, red cherries. The Cabernet gives a little bit of black fruit, so there's just like a kiss of cassis and blackberry. And then the French oak, I really feel like it pairs nice with that blackberry, giving it a little vanilla and clove. And then the American oak is more of like just wrapping the Tempranillo up and just kind of adding that savory spice. So sweet and sour, like almost like a pickle, if you will. This wine is aged for 14 months in oak, so it's getting up there and it has more texture. Um, a little bit of tannin, but the tannins aren't coming from the grapes. I think it's coming from that dusty, refined American oak and it's really delicious. So our final wine is a wine uh, from the Segesio family, which I love. They're a family um, that makes wine in Sonoma, and this wine in particular is from um, uh, the Alexander Valley uh, portion of Sonoma. It's a grape called Alianico, and Alianico is not normally grown in Sonoma, so this is a really cool exception. Alianico grows in Campania in the southern part of Italy around Naples and it also grows in an area called Basilicata. So sometimes you'll see a region um, called Terrassi and that's 100% Alianico. But what I love about the Alianico grape is that people call it the Barolo of the South. It's really rich and concentrated and deep in color, deep in flavor and it has a lot of tannin but it has this ripe sun-kissed fruit. And because of that, it really grows well in warmer climates. So Sonoma, even though it's a cooler portion of California, is still relatively warm and somewhat of like similar to the climate of Campania, maybe a little bit cooler, depending on the region. 
So we have a real strong kiss of oak on this like vanilla, cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg. Yet still the fruit and the sort of earthiness of the Aniko grape really comes through. This is definitely our fullest. And not only does the oak add the flavor, but here you feel like the oak has like a layer of texture. It's like wrapping up all that intense fruit and making it taste a little silkier and a little smoother. This is really fun um, because this wine, it, it has almost like a Cabernet um, aroma, texture, flavor, maybe just a little bit less tannin. So any of your friends that love Napa Valley Cab, bring this wine to them and they'll be super impressed. Thanks for joining us on the weekly tasting as we discovered and explored the different ways that wine is aged in oak barrels. Just to recap, I wanted you to know that there are many different um, levels of oak use. You can use any combination of French and American oak, and you can also take a percentage of your barrels uh, or percentage of your wine production and mix and match so you can have some in new oak and blend that with some that are aged in concrete. Really want you to think about oak like a, a nice, beautiful spice rack. And as you're tasting wine, just think about the idea of oak and how it contributes to the overall flavor and complexity and intensity of your wine. Thanks so much for joining us.